often overlooked but admired by many. We're going to take a look at the ducks of Queensland, affectionately known as the quackers. In this four-part series, we'll admire the 16 species that can be expected to be encountered on Queensland's dams, rivers and estuaries. Some species are resident, whilst others are migratory. They come in all shapes, sizes and plumage variations. Ducks can be loosely divided into two groups. Those that feed on the surface, known as dabblers, and those that dive for food, known as the diving ducks. Our first candidate is the Pacific black duck, a common and widespread species of duck across the Australian continent. They can be observed in a wide variety of wetland habitats. At first glance their plumage could be considered drab, but on closer inspection a beautifully marked head pattern is revealed. These are a dabbling duck, meaning that they either feed on the surface or just under the surface with the bottoms up, head and bill submerged method. Black ducks are commonly seen in pairs or loose groups. Male and female are difficult to separate in the field. In good light, their iridescent wing speculum changes from blue to green. Our second duck is the grey teal, seen here with the Pacific black duck in the foreground for comparison. This is another widespread species that can be encountered on dams, lakes and rivers. Initially they can appear to be a brown and grey bird. However, they have a beautifully marked plumage, especially on the flanks. When seen in good light, the red eye also stands out. The grey teal is another dabbling duck and their method of feeding can be observed here. Their bills serve to filter invertebrates and larvae, but also small plant matter which supplements their diet. Seen here in more open water, a pair is feeding and bathing. Note the white wing bar, along with the green speculum in the wing. Not to be confused with its close cousin, the grey teal, a third Queensland duck is the chestnut teal. This species can be observed in freshwater, but are often seen in saltwater and estuaries. These ducks are also dabblers and feed in a similar fashion to the Pacific black duck. They are sexually dimorphic, meaning the male's plumage is different to the female and can be easily separated in the field. In breeding plumage the male is quite handsome with his iridescent green head and chestnut flanks. The female has a more subdued plumage but is still very intricately marked.
To add further confusion, the chestnut teal, in common with other ducks, molts into a much duller plumage, which is known as eclipse. This adds complexity to the identification of male and female with this and other duck species. Our last duck in part one of our series is the Australasian shoveler, an uncommon species in Queensland waters. They're mainly observed as a migrant in the cooler months. Once again, the males are more colourfully marked than the females. Here we can see how the species gets its name, which is derived from its enormous shovel-like bill. This is a diagnostic feature, even in silhouette or poor light. This male is coming into breeding plumage and its vertical white crescent can be seen between the yellow eye and the bill. Other features include a light blue wing panel and orange legs. In part two of our series, we will look at four more beautiful ducks that are either resident or migrate to Queensland waters.